Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a happy Sunday to you all. Hopefully, your weekend is going nicely, or if you're watching this at any other point in the week, hopefully, you're having a great day nonetheless. We are doing this on the Sunday because I was very much under the weather yesterday. I came down with a little bit of a stomach bug, and well, I wanted to make sure I got myself better before I ended up doing any more damage to myself. So, here we are. Welcome to episode 19 of season 2 of OST Saturdays here on the channel. Of course, brought to you on a Sunday. Um, this is the, this is our little catch-up block, so we are jumping back about three months ago to even more of the OSTs that we missed out in the month of March, because I was, well, March was probably the busiest time of the year for me this year, because I was packing up my belongings, I was moving house, I was signing housing contracts, I was getting ready for the new academic year, and it was just kind of all a mess. So, let's jump back, rewind the clock to three months ago, and we have got four funky fresh songs to check out we've got nizu's latest song that we're gonna squeeze into osc saturday because technically i believe that was a single that was written for a film so we're just gonna tack it on here you know two birds with one stone kind of dealio so nizu's uh, sweet non-fiction their most recent single that dropped we've got a little bit of mr suman from stray kids i think again i think that's the second in uh, feature on osc saturdays for this year alone which is always very exciting so a little bit of a JYP block in there. 10 centimeter, Mr. Shipsenchi or Kwon Junyo once again has an OST inclusion. I believe that makes that number three or four for this year already, which is extremely impressive. And he is most certainly, definitely leading the pack in terms of the number of times this one specific artist has featured on OST Saturdays this year. And then finishing up with the infinite vocal duo of Mr. Sung Kyu and Mr. Woo Hyun, um, who, if I'm not mistaken, infinite have a group release um, later today, in fact, in about 90 minutes, because I'm recording this at about 4.30 on Sunday, so if that's the case, well, I'm going to be looking forward to that, but in the meantime, I'm going to hold myself over with a little bit of OST, so let's get started, shall we? Here we go! Now, this is going to be a rarity in OSC Saturdays this year when we check out the actual MV. We can do this with Nizu because they do individual MVs for themselves for the digital singles that eventually get used for dramas and so on. This has been the case for most of the previous digital singles that we've checked out from Nizu. You know, Coconut Paradise, um, well... Hartress and Lucky Star were Korean releases, so we checked out those MVs uh, on their own. But we got to jump back on board with Nizu, and uh, well, they have been a blast and are terrifically fun to listen to. And well, they had new music. This is now three months ago, but they had new music, so we're gonna check it out. Sweet nonfiction for the film Love Sick Ellie. And what other admin stuff did I want to say about Nizu? Yeah, I keep getting recommended Mayuka fan sites. I've never looked up Nizu in my life. I don't know if it was because I saw a picture that pointed out she and Onda from Everglow look very similar to each other in certain pictures, which I completely agree with. But ever since then, I just keep getting Mayuka uh, fan sites. Don't know why, but we roll with it. Also, their friendship and their kind of like their industry friendship they have with Mrs. Greenapple, the members from Mrs. Greenapple, especially Omori-kun, is terrific to see. I love Mrs. Greenapple and just seeing someone who, you know, doesn't normally partake in the whole like idol TikTok side of things, just have so much fun doing TikTok challenges with Nizu is just so heartwarming to see. Shout out Mrs. Greenapple one time, man. Anyways, sweet nonfiction. Here we go. I have not heard this in any capacity. It's just sonically already. It feels kind of similar to Lucky Star, you know, the B side off of the Korean album. Yeah, I 
I love the movement of the bass though. Hold on. Hate the harmony already. Is that Rio with the Adelids? I, I love it's just like this unabashedly cutesy with the Adelids. It adds character. Getting a lot of the cute Seattle's. I'm not mad at it though. It makes the song feel so bright and happy. And that chorus is very good. Switch it up for verse 2 one time, bring in rap line. Is anybody else getting the feeling that the vocals are extremely buttery for this? Like, really buttery smooth? And it just, it's one of those songs much like Mizzy's previous stuff, it just goes and goes and goes. And I don't care about the fact that it just keeps going, because I want it to keep going. Hit the harmonies again, hello. See what I mean by the song just keeps going? It just no breaks. Because why would you want to stop the really nice flow of the song, right? Just, just keep it going. more in the MV is there? Oh, it's like an end credit scene. We'll talk a little bit, but genuinely, Mizu's grasp on a good pop song groove is really impressive. That can't be understated. It's tremendous how well they, they can manage to maintain a groove throughout the song and just keep that. Because their songs, for me, have always had such a really good sense of groove to them. Even on a song like Paradise, where it's a little bit slower and a little bit more emotional, the song just feels so nice to listen to because it's, it goes. The movement of the song is so satisfying to listen to. They take it. They take that style of music to Korea with Heartress, Lucky Star, same deal. It's the type of music that once you press play, it just goes and goes and goes. And not once does it feel like the song is starting to run away from the listener at all. That is the Nizu charm for me. And they've done that every single time they drop new music. And that's so cool to me. But yeah, vocally, I feel like this song is a little bit different gravy. It's like... They've taken the buttery smooth vocal from, say, a song like Paradise, and they've tacked it on to a beat very akin to Lucky Star. It's just go, 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 and somehow they've managed to make that work really, really well. I, you know, I, I feel like I've mentioned her a lot when it comes to Nizu releases, also because she had her own Imogen Service episode, but Mihi, whenever she gets really buttery with the vocals, is just, oh... Ooh, it's so very tasty, indeed. I think, who, who was the other one? I think it's Mako, right? Again, I'm not the most familiar when it comes to Nizio members. I know I would probably say about half comfortably right now. Um, it's, 
just a matter of I think sitting down and properly like learning who's who. But yeah. vocally, vocally it's very, very nice. But then you get to like the rap sections with you know Rio on ad libs, Micah on the rap verses. I know there's one more member in there that I don't know the name of, but it's not all just buttery smooth. It's short, bouncy, and cutesy as well. And they, you know, package all of that together and it just feels so seamlessly well put together. And it's oh, oh, Nizio magic. Nizio magic. That's all I can say. Right, we keep it moving, staying within the company. Mr. Sugman from I almost said from JYP. Of course he's from JYP. From Stray Kids. Um I forget if we've done an OST. I'm pretty sure we've done an OST from him this year already. But you know what? I'm never going to complain about getting more Sungmin in my life because his voice is ooh. Um, so this is Phobia from I'm the Queen in This Life. The webtoon I'm the Queen in This Life. This is another one of those, um, I guess I was about to call it a show, but it's a publication or a webtoon. Where we have come back to this webtoon many a times already for the OST. And with good reason, because the music has been good and the artist list has been terrific. So let's keep her moving one time. Darker band vibes? Hold on. I feel like anything is gonna feel darker in comparison to Nizu, but already got this kind of heaviness to it. cool the way it's just Sudman to finish that chorus but there's just something about his vocal color that once he really gives it some oof to it just shines it pierces through and it's so nice and he's able to maintain that vocal color across his entire vocal scale and that's And tasteful harmonies too. They make his voice pop. There's no phobia. Yeah. The fact that that chorus goes from highest to highest to lowest to lows, and it's just it just keeps going until you get nothing at the end is really cool. Because they make that phrase end very clear. how they wrap it up at the end again yeah yeah it's a very ost coded song for sure it's got even though it is for a webtoon and i've done the spiel many times before but it does feel like an ost song it doesn't feel like a stray kid song it doesn't i feel like if something were ever to do a solo album I still don't think this would be something that he would maybe lead the album off with or anything like that. It just has too much of that emotional kind of attachment to a visual element. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I'm just saying this very much is a song that is made to be an OST 
and he pulls it off perfectly. I mean, there's a reason why Simon gets called for OSTs over and over and over again, because his voice just suits it. He's able to put in this really delicate balance of power and emotion, and he can control that exactly as to where and how the song requires him to do so, and it's effortless for him. In every single time, it doesn't matter if it's a really slow, emotional, like almost romantic ballad for a romance drama, or something a little bit heavier like this for a fantasy webtoon. It can be something really high energy and intense for, say, an action comedy. His voice can pull it off, and my god does he sound good on it. Do we have any scheduled Stray Kids stuff coming out soon? I feel like I haven't heard much from uh, the Stray Kids camp in terms of new music. I mean, they had the um, collab single with Charlie Poos, but... No, it feels like La 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 was a long time ago now, and I'm kind of craving some new Stray Kids music. Hmm. Right here, let's keep her moving. Mr. Ten Centimeter, Mr. Ship Senchi, once again on OST Saturdays, this time brought to you on a Sunday. I mean, this is from three months ago, so if his recent OSTs have been for like actual recent in the last like couple months or so, then I guess that still doesn't change the fact that he's had multiple OSTs already this year, but Mr. Kwon Jung Yo of Ten Centimeter, in a song titled Tell Me It's Not a Dream for Queen of Tears. This shows that, again, we have covered many occasion here. With good reason, once again, because yada yada yada, I've done the whole spiel already. So, he has a voice that is very suited for the OST. There's a reason why he gets called to so many of these. Kind of like what I said with Summon early, his voice is the OST voice in my mind right now. And, well, let's check this one out, here we go. Whenever you come, I It's a song in six eight. Never felt like this. Don't If we're talking about unique vocal colors, Konjunyo. Extremely unique vocals. Talking about. I still don't know why. This yeah, is the Kwon Jungyul magic. And it's not just OSTs that his voice is like this either. kind of slides and rolls into pitches and notes and it's the light to my darkness I just realized so much movement but it never feels sloppy right Smile. 
I like the secondary growth here in this song too. Extra piano, extra guitar. That post chorus hook, I think, might be my favorite part of the song. Do we get a final resolution? We don't! Oh, that's very cool. I like how they've finished that. Oh. That's very nice. It's, I mean, it's a Kwon Jung Yo masterpiece once again. There, I mean, I love his voice. There's just so much charm in that vocal color of his that really no one can match. He's got a vocal color akin to someone like Yi Mu Jin, who's got so much elasticity and flexibility in his voice and has that unique vocal color that can't really be described using words accurately. But we come back to his voice time and time and time again because I love listening to his voice. And he just, you know, he had a studio release last year called My Ultimate First Love, which was super pretty, very bright in comparison to his more emotional OSTs that he's done. But even though like, he's more than capable of doing that really kind of brighter, lighter sound, where I think his voice really shines is the drama OST realm. It's just... He is one of my favorite voices in the OST world. Just full stop. It's... There's just something so effortless about his voice. He makes every OST that we've done just loaded. And I mean loaded. With so much depth and color and emotion and technique. And just... Ah! Oh, I cannot say enough good things about his voice, man. And genuinely... Sincerely, I hope we get more of him this year. Like, not just in the OSC realm, but just new music in general. I hope we get new 10 centimeter music. Oh, oh, spectacular. And then, one final song for our little catch up session a little bit of a vocal duo from two gentlemen, or two of the gentlemen, I should say, over from the Infinite Camp, um, who again. As I mentioned in the intro, I believe are having a group comeback today in well, what is now going to be about an hour from now. So I'm going to keep my eyes out for that. But in the meantime, Mr. Sung Kyu and Mr. Woo Hyun with the song Beautiful for the drama The Destiny Changer. Did not know this was a thing that was happening. But you know what? Infinite being technically my first ever K-pop group just of all time. Found them through BTD. Um, well, it must have been like... 8th grade or freshman year of high school, and well, the rest is history. Well, not really. It took nine years to make my way back to Infinite later down the road. But you know what? These guys have always been like the main vocal duo of Infinite. They're two of the most like recognizable voices from Infinite music for me, and with good reason because they sound terrific together. So here we go. Why is this giving me uh, Mika We Are Young? Mika and Red Ones We Are Young from. Hello, hold on a second. Bump the volume one time. Yeah, it's very stylistically like similar. Oh yeah, but this kinda is gas, hold on. Yeah. 
it feels early infinite, doesn't it? It feels like 2013 infinite music. I guess that's not early for infinite, but you get my point. What is that Mika song from? It's from a movie, but I forget what the movie is called. Oh, from Kick-Ass. Yeah, it's like stylistically very similar to that, and I love it. song is straight gas what it's flames it chugs so fast that synth goes in so hard and then of course the ever reliable vocal duo of mr sunku and mr wujian teaming up together and bring that vocal magic especially the i don't i rarely go back but just peep these chords peep these vocal harmonies one time sustain it it's just it's just one note, but and the juxtaposition that that long held note creates with the furiously moving synthesizer in the background, whoo, whoo, ah, that is a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun indeed. But genuinely though, this song chugs with so much force and so much speed. It doesn't really ever let up either, which is really interesting to me, because I feel like a song that is this fast should feel like it's starting to run away from you. It never does. Kind of like with the Nizu song from earlier, it's a song that is really just goes and goes and goes, but you're always on board with it. You never feel like you're falling behind on it. And, you know, as someone who has a very much a soft spot for Infinite, but also has a very very much has a soft spot for just really good synthesizers. Yeah, I was already going to like this. But it was way better than anything I could have imagined. Oof. That is a really, really, really strong finish, by the way. Um, So strong, in fact, that I am going to... Where is OST of the Year list? Let me add this very quickly. Uh, beautiful. And Kim Sung Q and Nam Woo Hyun. Cool. Um, yeah, that, that one came out of nowhere. Am I complaining? No, absolutely not. It was terrific. In fact, this block was a lot of fun. Um, it was, it was nice to jump back on board with Niziu's new music. Sungmin and Shipsenchi are always ever reliable in the OST realm. And then, you know, topping it off with a little bit of infinite vocal magic one time? Oh, I'm never gonna complain about that. And the fact that, well, let's see. Um, I'm gonna look it up right now. Because I can. Uh, what day is it today? Today is the 9th. Yeah, Infinite's anniversary single titled Flower drops at 6 p.m., so I definitely am going to be checking that out. Keep your eyes peeled for that if it isn't out already, but I'm going to wrap it up here for today. Thank you all for listening along, watching along with me. 
Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today allows us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness may brighten up someone else's day to day and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy on the internet who waffles about music in his free time, you know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of yourselves. Oh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love. There we go. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.